Good morning, folks. Here are the photos from Hawaii thus far. The lava is really creeping in there. Can't help but feel like this guy's way too close. Anywho, the town is about one surge or wrong turn away from an evacuation. It's pretty much a slow-moving nightmare. Okay, let's get to it. The biggest sunspot of not just this solar cycle, but the biggest in nearly 25 years, kept firing away in the last 24 hours and continues into the morning. We've had three M flares and an X-class blast from the region, but still no ejecta, no CME, and no real danger. The plasma movement within the group and the surrounding regions was in last night's evening news. Try to note the direct currents of ionized iron within the umbral magnetic fields. Their movement illuminates where this flare energy comes from highly complex even still. At this time we are just about ready to say goodbye to the region. We'll maybe get some parting shots before he goes. Other top solar news includes above average solar wind speed and some magnetic perturbations that have Earth's magnetosphere in a bit of instability at the moment. On the filament locator at Iswa, we note the many small ropes down south and the big one up north. The big one is easiest to see when viewing the entire Earth-facing disk, a significant solar figure but one that has held tight thus far. Smaller ones down below are visible as well. The ones incoming at the eastern limb appear to be comprised of three or four solar tornadoes reaching up from the surface and connecting in the corona just above the interface region. In terms of coronal holes, the one down south is easily visible but you can also see one up north coming in simultaneously. The umbral and coronal fields reveal an unimpeded southern opening, but some blockage of the northern positive hole. This is why Iswa shows the southern opening to be tremendously powerful, but the northern opening not so much. It's hampered by the coronal magnetic fields. With two coronal holes on the earth-facing fourth of the star, we got a slight seismic uptick. Top rumble being in the western Pacific, they've settled on Tonga as the epicenter in just over 6 magnitude range. Top link for today is from Chandra. The X-ray experts have compared Virgo to Perseus in pretty good detail, especially in terms of star formation. EU proponents grit your teeth to get through their choices in diction. So here's our Indian Ocean Cyclone. Precipitable water overlay reveals the flood risk for when it will swing west and make landfall. Won't be for a few days yet. We've got two notes at Central America, two lows. One made landfall and is considered storm remnants but still a flood advisory and we wait for model confirmation about where the new storm is heading. Just to the north, we see a low in south central Canada bringing hot wet air up the eastern side of the convergence and cooler air around the western side collision in the middle. We've also got the moisture flow off the Pacific low remaining. The convergence will produce severe weather this evening. Please check your local forecasts here and the western rains will continue with some snow in the mix as well where the cooler air catches that flow in and around the Rockies. Europe major convergence to be seen there pretty solid off the northern low also the temperature suggests some energy in the mediterranean due south of that as well floods and high wind watch at the convergence lightning alerts to the south you've got that same moisture flow as yesterday here accompanied by two well-seen convergences one there and another forming over New Zealand it will rain over wide portions of those areas but the storms will stick to the convergences got some shots of our star to close at 6.05 a.m. Eastern Time 5.05 a.m. Central that's the news eyes open no fear be safe everyone